I trust in God because he never fails. Am I on? I will be. There you go. I trust in God. So we've been uh, <clears throat> going through the letters in Revelation chapter 2. This week we're in that second letter. But you know, as I read that letter and I contemplated on that letter, the theme was I trust in God. At this time, the children may be dismissed for children's church. So I'm going to ask a question, and you don't have to put your hand up. But the question is, do you trust God? Now, most of us, probably all of us, yes, I trust in God. But as soon as something happens, how many times do we blame other people? As soon as something happens, we get mad and say, well, it was their fault. I wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for them. That person messed me over. That per you know, we do it. I mean, I've done it. And we complain. If it had not been for them, I wouldn't be in this position. There comes a point when we have to stop that and just trust in God. Just trust him. Just trust in God. So as I was reading that letter and I was thinking about trusting God was the main theme. It was the craziest thing. I was driving. I was working. And I was driving. And I'm thinking, it's all about trust. I'm praying. I'm talking to God. God, it's about trust. And I look over on this church sign, and it said, trust God for guidance. I said, so trust is the theme. God has spoken. I want you to trust him. So it, it, the, whenever I put a sermon together, I always have a motive. Today's motive, my motive of putting this sermon together was establish a true trust in God. Because I know if we establish a true trust in God, we don't complain as much. If we trust God, we do not complain because we know he won't fail. That's why I put that song in there. And if I know he won't fail, I'm not going to fail. I'm going to go through hardships. I'm going to go through hard times. I'm going to fall flat on my face at some times. It's going to be times it seems like everybody's against me. But I got to trust him. I got to trust him. And that's what today's message is all about. So I want to open up with a verse just to get us going into that trust area. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. You see, there's, there's two things here. Sometimes, how many times have you gone through a situation like, well, I've been through this before, and according to my understanding, this is how it unfolds. You ever try to diagnose somebody with your own understanding? Well, I think they're doing this because. God says, don't rely on your understanding. Your understanding is flawed. Let's just put that out there. Your understanding of things is wrong. It's flawed. You don't understand. I had a pastor tell me once. He, he was kind of like my mentor. He said, for every one thing you understand about a situation, there's 10 things about it you don't understand. And I'm up here trying to make an assumption. Well, they're doing this because, and God says, okay, I'm glad you think you got it all figured out because it's all a different way that you just don't know. So just trust me. God's saying, just trust me. Don't rely on your own understanding because you don't understand, number one. Just trust me. Just trust me. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. And sometimes that's where the key is, is all of our heart. Sometimes we trust him with a little bit. But the concept is trust him with all of it all of it, even when you don't understand. So the second part of this verse, or second part that leads us into the letter, as we trust God, watch this. This has actually become one of my favorite verses. We walk by faith, not by sight. You see, sometimes we see things and we get upset. Sometimes we see what people do and we become, how many people watch the news and become upset? How many people get on social media and become upset? How many times do you see something and you're upset because it didn't turn out the way you wanted it? Well, God is saying, we walk by faith, not by sight. Quit looking at those things and just trust me. I wish God would just come down and sometimes just slap me around and say, quit going by what you see and just trust me. Because what you see is not always what's going on. But yet you sure do get upset because of what you see. We walk by faith by, we walk by faith not by what we see. And you know, I talk to people, and, and they get so bent out of shape because of what they see. 
They watch those political channels, and what they see, they get so upset, and they become so grumbling and moaning and crying and complaining. And sometimes people see other people doing things, and they get so upset. And God says, walk by faith, not by what you see. Sometimes we see nothing but doom and gloom. Well, if I do this, or if I do, think about it. Have you ever had a situation to make? And you think, well, if I do this, according to my understanding, I'm going to be hurting, I'm going to be struggling, so I'm not going to do that. Well, God says, there you go. Lean on your own understanding. I'm calling you to go a different direction. I know you don't see it. I know you don't understand it, but have faith in me that when I tell you to get out of it, get out of it. When I tell you to stop doing it, stop doing it. Sometimes we get into bad habits. I've been in bad habits. And I said, okay, God, I'll, I'll stop it in a week. God, I'll stop it in two weeks. He said, no, just stop now. Well, if I trust him, I'll listen. If I don't trust him, I'll keep doing it. That's just the crux of it. Trust in God. So let's get into this letter and see how this thing unfolds. In this letter written to the Sumerians, he says this, starting in Revelation chapter 2. Write this letter to the angel of the church of Samaria. This is the message from the one who is the first, the last, who was dead, and now is alive. And I love this, because the message is saying this. Hey, this message is from the Lord. If we want to receive this message, we have to understand it's from the Lord. You know what thing? I, I get frustrated when I hear people say, well, man wrote the Bible. No, the message is from God. You call it what you want. I'm going to say the message is from God, and when the message is from God, I'm going to listen. The message is from the Lord. He's the first, the last. He was the one who was dead. He's the one who was living. It's from him. So what is this message? What's the message? I like this. He says, I know of your suffering and your poverty, but you are rich. I know the blasphemy of those opposing you. They say they are Jews, but they are not because their synagogue belongs to Satan. This is a lot to unfold. So I want to start on the second half. When it says, I know the blasphemy of those opposing you, they say they're Jews, but they're not because their synagogue belongs to Satan. So when we read the Bible, we understand there's two terms, Jews and Gentiles. Jews are often referred to the Christians. The Gentiles are often referred to the unsaved. So what he's saying is these Jews, these Christians, they're opposing you. The Jews were opposing, the Christians were opposing those of Samaria. Well, you know what? Today in 2024, there's other Christians opposing us. So I, I get a little baffled sometimes when people start saying, what version do you read? Do you speak in tongues? Was you baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or was you baptized in Jesus? You see, people have so many questions. The ones who question everything, those are religious people. If you say, I'm going to church, I shouldn't just inundate you with questions. I should say, praise the Lord. I'm glad you're worshiping God. I'm glad you're learning. But the opposing people that call themselves Christian, oh, yeah, what version do you guys preach from? Does it matter? I'm following Jesus. I'm in love with Jesus. I have a relationship with Jesus. Or you say, I go to this church. Well, do they speak in tongues? You know, people just have so many questions. How was you baptized? I'm done with the questions. How about encouraging somebody? If you say, hey, I got baptized this weekend, I don't want to inundate you with questions. I want to say, praise the Lord, I'm going to be praying for you. I was baptized too. See, there comes a point when we just have to encourage and walk and lift each other up. But there's a lot of people out there that's opposing it. I don't mind the non-Christians opposing it because they don't know. But when other Christians start coming at me with all that, I just get exhausted. I'm done. I don't need to get into all of that conversation and all of that, that battle because, you know what? Jesus Christ gave his life so I could be saved. And I know I went to that water. And I know I went down. I buried my old self, and I came back up, resurrected to live a new life. I know I belong to Jesus. I know I'm walking with Jesus. So don't question me about it. How about encouraging me? See, there's people out there. They're always going to oppose everything you do. I'm tired of questions. I dare somebody just to say, hey, I'm praying for you. I want to walk with you. I want to encourage you. Instead of having 10,000 questions, does your church dance? Does your church shout? 
Does your chance fall out? You know, everybody just has these questions. My question is, well, why don't you just come and learn of Jesus? Why don't you just come and learn of Jesus? Because at the end of the day, let's let the main thing be the main thing. And the main thing is Jesus gave his life so I could be saved. The main thing is the main thing. Don't question it. But, you know, so he, he says, I know those opposing you, they say that they're Christians, but they're really not. So think about it. If someone opposes you, don't let your faith be shaken. Don't let it be shaken. People's going to question you. They're going to challenge you. Just say, I don't know. Why don't you just come and learn of Jesus? That's it. I don't know, but why don't you just come with me and learn of Jesus? I know we worship. I know we pray. I know we read the word. I know God speaks to my heart. I know my life changes. Just come and learn. So don't, don't let it shake you because that happens. But then look at the first part. The first part, he says, I know about your suffering and your poverty, but you're rich. You see, God knows that you're suffering. He knows you're hurting. He knows people's opposing you. He knows every challenges you have. So I've read a commentary on this, and I like what the commentary said. It says the Samaritan poverty was just not a lack of wealth, but a destitution that forced people to beg in which life was difficult for uncompromising Christians to make a living. I feel like in 2024, if you want to be an uncompromising Christian, it's going to be rough. Being an uncompromising Christian says, I'm not going to believe the things that the world believes. I'm going to go a different direction. I know the world says this is okay, but my Bible, my God, the Holy Spirit tells me it's not okay. Sometimes you have to be uncompromised and go that direction. Because if you compromise it and you go a different direction, you're going to be lost. You're going to be confused. And next thing you're going to be spiritually poor. But God is telling us, I don't, I don't want you to be tossed to and fro. Don't be compromised in your belief, but stay focused on Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus only. Build on your relationship and let me take care of the rest. If you are in need, we'll help you. You see, there's two kinds of people. There's some people is in need because they're living a life of sin, and they're making bad choices with their money. They're making bad choices with things that they're doing, and next thing you know, they're in need. And then there's some people that say, I'm going to just live an uncompromised life. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to give back to God the things he's given me. I'm going to cut some things out. I'm going to trust him, but I'm in need. If you're in need because you're uncompromised and you're giving it to God, let us know. We'll help you. We'll help you as God leads. But sometimes people will come in and say, hey, I need help. I'm going to question you. Well, have you been faithful in giving? Do you trust God? I'm going to ask the questions. Are you in the Word? Do you pray? Where is your money gone? You, you know, you just got to get to the source of it. Here's why. I don't want to give you something just to let you destroy it again. I'm going to give you the right resources that helps you overcome, because that's what this church is all about, is to help people overcome. Ain't going to beat you up for making a mistake, because I make mistakes. We've all made mistakes. I'd rather acknowledge the mistakes and get it together in order to overcome it and make it better. That's what it's all about. I want to be a church filled with uncompromising people to understand that sometimes it's going to be hard. Sometimes life's going to be a struggle. But I want you to look around. I want you to see people that are praying for you. They're supporting you. They're encouraging you. They want to help you. And we're a small enough church that we can help each other. We can trust each other, talk to each other, and just be there to help each other. So I love this. Because if you read in, in, in this letter, he goes on. Don't be afraid of what you're about to suffer. I'm just going to stop there for a minute. Things in life, you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer. There's going to, there's, there's going to come a time when you go to the doctor and they're going to say, you have cancer. You have this. You have that. Those things are going to happen. We have family. We have friends. We see it all the time. Things happen. I don't want you falling apart. That's why the Bible says, don't be afraid. Then he goes on because he says here, he says, the devil will throw some of you into prison to test you. You see, these, these followers of Christ, they were being put in jail. I've never been put in jail for, my following, for following Christ. But you can be persecuted. You see, I'm not, I haven't been put to jail, and I haven't been faced death. 
But yet sometimes I'm faced with, do I go with these friends or do I do what God says? Do I forsake these groups of people to be rejected and do what God says to be accepted? You see, that's a whole different category than facing death, death or jail. These people, God says, hey, don't be afraid they put you in jail. And I can see God saying to us in 2024, don't be afraid if people don't like you. Don't be afraid if people stop talking to you for following me. Don't be afraid if you come to church and don't hang out with those people and they're going to criticize you. Don't be afraid. You see, it's a whole different level, isn't it? It's one thing to be put to death or go to jail. But God says, you can't even, you can't even make a decision to follow me because you don't want to offend your friends. It comes a point when you've got to make a sacrifice. And you just got to make a sacrifice. But he goes on. He says this, but, but if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. You see, I love that. If you remain faithful, even to death, he's not even asking me to be faithful to death. He's just asking me to be faithful of giving him my very best. He's asking me to be faithful in my prayer time. He's asking me to be faithful in my giving. He's asking me to be faithful in my commitment to being in church. He's asking me to be faithful in my relationship with him. He's asking me to be faithful of, do I trust him? See, I don't want nobody to say, I trust God, but then tossing and turning all night long, stressed out, filled with anxiety and fear. That's not trust. And sometimes we can say it with our lips, but if our hearts believe in something different, I want to believe what I say. I want to believe what I know. And that's what it all comes down to. It all comes down to asking myself, am I faithful? Because the Bible says, if you remain faithful, if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. If you can remain faithful, even in the face of rejection, I give you the crown of life. If you can remain faithful in, in the face of having to sacrifice something, you receive a crown of life. What it comes down to is are we faithful to God? That's a question we can all ask ourselves. Are we faithful to God in every circumstances? Or are we faithful to God when we have time? Am I faithful to God to give him a little? Or am I faithful to God to give him more? Am I faithful in my commitment all the time or just when I have time? There's a difference there. If I'm faithful all the time, then I know I'll receive the crown of life. You see, this, this is a good letter. This letter says, hey, you're going to suffer some things. You're going to go through some bad things. These people, was, they were faced with jail. They were faced with death. We're not faced with jail or death, but we're faced with rejection. We're faced with ridicule. You know, there's, there come, there's going to come a time when you stand on your faith and say, I don't believe in that. All oh, people are going to rip you apart. They're going to call you names. They're going to question you. You're going to question yourself. I want to remain faithful and say, I don't agree with it. I don't have to agree with it. If you agree with it, that's fine. I'm not here to oppose you. I'm saying I do not agree with it. Because the Bible I read, the God I serve, He's calling me to go a different direction. Just because I disagree with something doesn't give me the right to beat down on you. But just because I disagree with something is me, me being faithful to what God's called me to do. And if they call me names for that, then so be it. I've been called a lot of names before. I've been called a lot of names. And I guess if you call me names because I'm a Christ follower, that's one I can wear as a badge of honor. Because I know in the end, I win. And that's what this, that's what this, this letter's all about. There comes a point when we're at crossroads. Do we do what the world is doing? Do we do what our friends are doing? Or do we listen to God and go a different direction? Now, I don't know about you, but daily, God's calling me to make a decision. I can follow my own flesh, or I can go the way God wants me to go. I want to be faithful. Because if you're faithful, you overcome. If you're faithful, you win. If you're faithful, you come out on top. 
if you're faithful, it's going to be hardships, and, and things are going to not always go the way you want it. But if you remain faithful, you receive a crown of life. Amen? So as we close in prayer, oh, I forgot there's one more verse. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit. See, that's why when I opened up, what's the Spirit speaking to you? This is a good time to really reflect on what the Spirit has said to you. I can promise you this, probably in all of us, the Spirit has spoken to you about giving something up. The Spirit has spoken to you about a different direction to take. Are you going to listen? Anyone with ears must hear, listen to the Spirit, and understand what He is saying to the churches. Watch this. Whoever is victorious will not be harmed by the second death. See, later on down the road, when things start to unfold, when things start to happen, if you listen and follow, you will not be harmed. Let's just be honest. If we do not listen and we keep going the direction we want, we're going to fall flat on our face. And there we are. Hey, God, help me. Hey, God, help me. And and God said, well, I told you not to do it. Remember that phrase, the old school phrase? You made that bed, you lie in it. So when things fall apart, don't blame God. Where's he at? But repent. God, you told me, you told me so. I didn't listen. I repent. And if I have to reap the consequences of my actions, then I will. Because I know you'll walk with me. I know you'll help me. But the reality of it is, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he's saying. At this time, it's a time to listen to what the Spirit has spoken to you. Here's what I'm faithful of. I'm faithful to know. As this word's going out, the Spirit is just touching each and every one of our hearts. Because we're all in different places in our life. We're all in different maturity levels of Christ in our life. We're all at different levels. But I do know this. We all fail. We all make mistakes. But the Spirit is speaking to each one of us because He loves each and every one of us. He wants you to overcome. He wants you to do better. He wants to have much better than you could ever think or imagine of yourself. All you got to do is listen. So as we go to prayer, as we go to prayer, I want to be mindful what the Spirit has spoken. As we close in prayer and, and we play this last song, I want you to be mindful of what the Spirit has spoken. I want you to be mindful of what it is you are doing. I want you to reflect on your life and say, what am I doing? On a daily basis, what am I doing? Where am I going? How am I living? I want you to measure everything according to what God has spoken. There comes a point when you got to say, God, what do you want me to do? Move on that. God, what do you want me to give up? God, what do you want me to give? What do you want me to do? What direction do you want me to go? He will speak if you listen. To he that has ears to hear, listen to what the Spirit says. And then the question is, you have to ask, do you trust God? Do you trust him? What if he calls you to do something totally different than you ever expected? Do you trust him? What if he calls you to go a different direction than you ever imagined? Do you trust him? Don't lean on your own understanding and say, I don't understand that, and that's kind of weird, but I'll go this because I understand it. And sometimes we, we go a direction that we understand. We go a direction that we're comfortable with. But he says, no, I want you to go a different direction. Are you willing to listen? So as we close, we're going to play this last song. And as we play this last song, I want you to ask yourself, do you trust God in all those areas? Think about what the Spirit has spoken to you. If you want to come and pray at the altar, you can talk to God one-on-one right here. He's listening. He spoke to you. You speak back to him, and you listen. If you need prayer, you want somebody to pray for you, I can pray for you over here. I can pray for you one-on-one. You want to kneel down, I can pray over you. This is your opportunity to speak to the Spirit as he has spoken to you. Let's pray. I, I got to go run the computer, but let's pray. Father God, we just come before you. Thanking you for this day. Thanking you for this word. 
Lord, thanking you, number one, that you are our Father. We're your children. And Lord, you, you have nothing but our best interests in mind. Lord, you want us to overcome. You want us to move in the direction that you have spoken. Lord, you want to bless us. But sometimes the reality of it is, do we trust you? Are we willing to give in and go your direction? Lord, I'll be honest, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to see something we don't understand. It's hard to see, but that's why your word tells us that we walk by faith, not by sight. That's why your word tells us, Lord, don't lean on our own understanding, but trust and acknowledge you in all your ways. And I just pray as we close that your Holy Spirit would continue to speak to our hearts, continue to guide us, continue to give us direction as we trust you. The question we have to ask ourselves, Lord, is do we trust you the way we say we do? And we just pray and ask all these things to be done in Jesus' name. Amen.